Use your facial expressions and paste them onto any photo. For example, take a video of yourself like this and a photo generated with AI like this. Combine them and you'll get this. Here's the best part. This is absolutely free and we will install it on our local PC. In this video, I will go over the minimum system requirements for live portrait, previewing live portrait, installing live portrait, and some tips and tricks on how to get the best results. For most AI tools to run locally, it is ideal to have a decent GPU, preferably an NVIDIA GPU with at least eight gigabytes of VRAM. I was told that live portrait uses around three gigabytes of VRAM so you might be able to get away with a 4 gigabyte card. However, don't quote me on that. For users who do not meet the minimum system requirements, you could use spaces on Hugging Face. Of course, you will be billed hourly for this so pick your poison. Let's take a look at what Live Portrait can do. You'll need two things, a driving video which is a recording of you or someone else showing facial expressions and a source photo that you want to animate. They provide some examples you can use here. Simply load your driving Driving video, I'll use this example. Then load your source photo, I'll use this example. Click on animate and wait for the output. I have an RTX 3060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and this took around 83 seconds. At any time while it's animating, you can see the status by bringing up your command prompt window. And just for reference, the source video is 18 seconds long. Once it's done, you'll receive two outputs, the main animation by itself and a side-by-side -side comparison output. Let's check out the main animation. Nice. Now let's take a look at the side by side comparison output. Perfect. When you're satisfied, click on this to download your output. Scrolling down, you can see some example output settings. This retargeting feature lets you adjust the eyes and lips on your source portrait. You can visualize how the eyes will look when open and closed, and the same for the lips. So you can add your source portrait. I'll use this Mona Lisa picture. I'll adjust the eyes by maxing it out. Click retarget, and there you go. You can now see how your portrait will look with eyes wide open. Next, I'll adjust the eyes and use the minimum settings and as you can see you can now preview your portrait with the eyes closed. You also have a settings for the lips so let me max that settings out and there you go. Now let's max both settings. Perfect. Whatever Mona Lisa is looking at she is shocked. This gives you a great way to visualize beforehand what your portrait will look like with eyes open and closed and the mouth open and closed. Let's see how this image looks with a shock expression. Now does this work with animals like dogs and cats? According to live portrait, it does. So let me put it to the test. I tried using this dog image and I got an error and it looks like the error is no face detected in the source image. Well, guess it didn't work with animals no matter what I did with dog and cat images. I even used the example source image that live portrait has on their website and it didn't work. So I tried it with the retargeting feature and I still couldn't get it to work. So if you get it to work with dog or cat images, let us know in the comments below. But what about creatures like my Hedra video that you can watch here? Let's see if using humanoid creatures work with live portraits. So I went ahead and used one of the creature images that I generated in Stable Diffusion for my Hedra video and used the same example driving video to animate it. This was the results. Okay, not the best results. Here is a side by side comparison.
Now, this is why using the retargeting feature is a great idea because this video took me a few minutes to produce. Instead of wasting time to see if it would work, I could have simply used the retargeting mode and get a quick look at the results with the eyes and the lips. Let's install it, but be sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss out on any steps. I'll also provide some tips and tricks later for best results. First, git install. Head over to git-scm.com. That's g-i-t-scm.com. From here, click on downloads you'll be able to download it for mac os linux or windows for me i'll be using windows so over to the right hand side they already have a latest release version for windows so click on download here i'll choose 64 bit for windows setup download and install it using all default settings and let's move on to the next which is python installation we will need to download and install python head over to python.org and from here click on downloads again for me i'll be using windows so click on windows now for most ai apps that run locally on your computer they require python 3.10 to 3.11 the latest 3.12 doesn't work as well and you'll only make things hard on yourself so download and install 3.11 choose the windows 64-bit installer save it and install it again all default settings will work next mini conda installation now we need to install mini conda so head over to Click on latest mini conda installer links by Python version. Do not get the 3.12, go with the 3.11 or 3.10 version. I'll use 3.11, save it and install it. Click on next, click on I agree. Here, select all users and click on next. You may get a pop-up notification, click OK. Now from here, I'll be using the default path. If you decide to change it, just remember the path you installed mini conda in because we will need it later. So I'll copy this path. Now I'll click next here click on clear the package cache upon completion this will recover some disk space now click install when it's done click on finish now click on your windows button on the bottom left corner of your screen and search for edit the system environment variables click on it you may get an administrative pop-up click ok now click on environment variables from here click on path we need to use the path where we installed mini conda in this video i I use the default path which is c drive program data miniconda 3 so open that path up in file explorer and you'll see a folder called scripts go into the scripts folder and at the top address bar copy the path now go back to your environment variables tab and add a new path paste that path click ok three times now let's test to see if it works click on start search cmd and open a command prompt window type conda hyphen hyphen version and hit enter you should see something like this cool now that we've got the main components installed let's move on to the next step which is installing live portrait head over to the live portrait github page this link here all links will be in the description and if we take a look at the github page they have the instructions to install live portrait under the getting started section follow along as i will take you step by step first copy this git clone section here including the url next open file explorer and navigate to the drive you want to install live portrait in for me i'll be using my f drive click on the address bar section and and type cmd and hit enter in this command prompt window go ahead and paste the git clone text we copied previously and hit enter a live portrait folder will be created and next we need to change our directory in our command prompt window to the live portrait folder to do this type cd space live portrait or just copy and paste the line from the github page into your command prompt window hit enter and now you should be inside of your live portrait folder copy and paste the next line from the github page which is is conda create dash n live portrait python equals equals 3.9.18 and hit enter as you can see i already have this installed but i'll go ahead and redo it for the video so i'll hit y for yes and hit enter next type y for yes and hit enter this will install the packages needed now we need to activate the conda environment as it says here conda activate live portrait or simply go back and copy and paste it from github into your command prompt window it's all the same hit enter and your command prompt window should look like this 
The next step is to pip install the requirements. So go back to GitHub and copy and paste the line or type pip install dash r requirements.txt into your command prompt window like this. Hit enter and this part will take some time. Next, we need to download the pre-trained weights, aka models. To do this, click on the Google Drive link from the GitHub page. You should see two folders, inside face and live portrait. Click on the three dots on the inside face folder and select download. Do the same for the live portrait folder. It will create a zip file. We will save these two zip files in our live portrait folder under the subfolder pre-trained underscore weights. If you have 7-zip, WinRAR, etc., you can right click on the zip file and select extract here. If not, double click onto the zip file and drag and drop the folder into the pre-trained underscore weights folder like so. Do the same for the other zip file and you should now have your insight face and live portrait subfolders with these models inside. Go ahead and delete the zip files and let's move on to our next step. Go back to your command prompt window and type python space app.py hit enter. This will launch live portrait. If you get a firewall pop up, click allow access. Now you should have a gradio.live URL link. Copy and paste that into your web browser of choice and congratulations. Live portrait is live and ready to go. You should have an interface that looks similar to this. Tips and tricks. For your driving video, try to crop your video down to 512 by 512 pixels for the best results. Focus on your face area similar to the example videos and try to minimize hard turns or shoulder movements. Make sure that the first frame of your driving video is a frontal face picture with a neutral expression. As for your source image, the final output will be according to your source image dimensions. For landscape or 16 by 9 ratios, I'd recommend using 576 by 1024 pixels and for portrait mode or the 9 by 16 aspect ratio, use 1024 by 576 pixels. This will give you the best results.